Hello from my cute R-Pod camper. Here's a photo of the day that I bought it. I was equally as excited as I was scared, and that's a really good place to be for getting out of your comfort zone as well as personal growth. Working while full-time RVing has given me some of the most beautiful office views. I've seen incredible places, but surprisingly to me, the people that I met along the way have been the greatest gift of all. When I started this adventure, I would plan my route around visiting family, friends, people on my Young Living team. I would have oil and wellness classes along the way, and it would make a lot of my travels tax deductible, one of my favorite benefits of a at-home business, which we'll talk about later for sure. I would hit vendor events, local festivals. I would find local wellness fairs and even have my own pop-up events. You may think I'm a total extrovert, and I will tell you that is not the case. I definitely work through a good amount of social anxiety. But if you put me behind a table in an opportunity to help other people, to share information and education, to give them an experience, I'm in my element. And I have met people through this business that I would have never met otherwise. And some of them have definitely become lifelong friends. Before I purchased this camper, I had over two decades worth of experience as a self-employed entrepreneur. I was a yoga instructor and a bodywork practitioner, and I started a Young Living business by accident. I actually had no idea that it was a business opportunity, and I didn't know what network marketing was. I just couldn't shut up about the products that I loved, and it was no different than um, telling people about a new restaurant or a great new movie that I saw. I got my first check by accident. I almost threw it away thinking it was junk mail. <laughs> and the rest is history. Um, I started sharing more rather than just organically. And slowly my Young Living income covered my car payment and then my mortgage. And then slowly grew to be more than I was making in my 20-year-old business. Well, I guess it was probably just about 12 or 13 years old at that point, but I couldn't have made any more in that business unless we added more hours to the day. And this was the first time I experienced doing something other than trading my time for money. Because my Young Living business was not location-based, I could take off and travel as much as I wanted. And in fact, my business would grow when I would travel compared to if I wanted to take a month off and go to Hawaii, I would have to save up because I knew no income was coming in. I was always able to take off as much time as I wanted, but I wasn't able to earn an income at the same time. I officially retired as a body worker and I would travel for long winters and come back to Northeastern Pennsylvania to run yoga classes for kids and adults in the summer. And then COVID hit and my 20 year old yoga business disappeared overnight. I learned firsthand that jobs may not be as secure as we once thought and having multiple streams of income in times like these might be a more of a necessity rather than just a good idea. Thank goodness I had Young Living and because everybody's focus was all of a sudden on their health and immune support strength, um, I was busier than ever because these were all things that the Young Living lifestyle had talked about since I've been involved getting the next challenge for me was moving fully online our young living team had always had educational classes and workshops over our social media and facebook pages we would meet often with zoom to support our community and run educational series but now the entire world was on zoom i choose to believe that life is always unfolding for us one of the biggest gifts I was given during this time was moving fully online, creating a presence and outreach that truly allowed me to work remotely. Many people have always worked their Young Living business in this way because there's so many different ways to do it. I was more so a people person. I loved doing home classes and vendor events. Switching to fully online has had so many benefits. I could truly be anywhere my life for the first time wasn't revolving around a schedule and a calendar of where I needed to be. My outreach was now global. I found myself connecting with people in countries all over the world. And yes, Young Living is a global market. 
I was able to focus on online classes, events, and outreach, which were less time consuming for me. And I zeroed in on my passion and niche, branded myself and created a fun website that really encompasses how and why I share liveyourradiantlife.com. People have all kinds of niches in young living. Some people focus on pet wellness, skincare, makeup, switching to safer products, cutting out the toxins, digestion, immune support. I love self-care. I studied biobehavioral health in college and learned that that lifestyle was the most powerful factor in our health. That's why I continued my education after graduation with learning bodywork modalities and yoga traditions. These were ways that I could support people in their self-care, stress management, and their mindset. Now I was able to bring my passions, tools, and educational resources for my community fully online. I even created a beautiful fill your cup vault to support everyone with yoga, relaxation, breathing, and self-care as we moved through quarantine and shut down together. The interesting thing is that 95% of our health, including our immune strength, which was a very important focus for most people over this past year, is determined by lifestyle. The things that we do have control over, getting enough sleep, exercise, nutrition, having less toxins in our lives and our foods and our personal care products and our household products, including stress management in our daily routine. This is what the Young Living Lifestyle is all about and the message we have always been sharing. It's what I'm most passionate about sharing because it empowers people to live their most radiant life. So that's a broad overview of my RVing entrepreneurial story and where I am now. But let's get down to the question at hand. Network marketing. It's a scam, right? A pyramid scheme. It only works for people that are at the top or that got in early. These are things that I hear less and less these days because referral systems are so much more common. It also seems like so many people have side hustles as we're living in a world where most of us need or at least could use multiple streams of income. Let's take a look at the network marketing industry. Worldwide, it's a $178 billion industry that employs either part or full time 96 million people worldwide and pays them over $71 billion a year. 82% report a successful experience with the network marketing. But let's look at the industry a little bit more. 70% of people would love to be their own boss, but they don't know how. You could become a business owner a few different ways. You could buy a business that someone is selling, but then you have to ask why are they selling it. You can buy a franchise, but this is very expensive. For example, Dunkin' Donuts is roughly a half of a million dollars as a startup. You can start from scratch, but there's a lot of money and time investment in having a product, research and development, branding, producing it. You could be an investor or a venture capitalist, but again, that takes a lot of money, expertise, and time. It involves a lot of risk. Um, the rise of the entrepreneur said that one in 11 investor opportunities pan out and one in 15 venture capitalist endeavors are a success. Network marketing is another avenue for becoming a business owner with very low risk and proven aspects. You don't need to create from scratch. They have a proven product. They've built a system and trainings there's just no employer. It has all the benefits of traditional business ownership without the risk. Often there's a very low investment needed. For me, my Young Living kit was under $200 and it was product that I wanted anyway. I didn't know it was a business and it's why most people join the company so they could get the product at a discounted price. But it gave me everything that I needed to share as much or as little as I wanted with no sales pressure or quota. Network marketing is an opportunity for the average person that may not have the resources to start their own business with startup costs, product development, branding, marketing, even opening a small brick and mortar yogurt shop would take between $204,000 just to start up. Well, should we address the elephant in the room? But aren't they a pyramid scheme? Let's look at corporate America. There's one CEO at the top of the company, thousands at the bottom, 
every 10 years, maybe you get a new person at the top and it's really hard to rise even to middle management. That's a pyramid. In network marketing, anyone, no matter where they start, can rise to any level. It's actually the opposite. It's an inverse pyramid. Pyramid schemes have no product. They are illegal. Network marketing, also called MLMs or direct sales, is a marketing strategy. Basically, goods are being sold directly from the company to the consumer, cutting out the middleman. The name MLM stands for multi-level marketing because the person is paid on multi-levels for commissions. The industry is most commonly called network marketing because there's a large group of entrepreneurs instead of a small group. So say a company wants to move $10 million worth of product in a month. They can pay a thousand salesmen and have a sales quota of $10,000 each, or they could have a sales team of entrepreneurs, 10,000 let's say, that on average sell a thousand dollars worth of product a month. This gives them no stress. People could work part-time, full-time, and have a broad array of income they could bring in, whether they're just trying to pay for product, have a side income, or make a full-time career. Traditional companies pay 40 to 50% of their revenue on advertising, while network marketing companies pay commissions to their independent distributors, brand affiliates, brand partners. There's a few different names for them. And there's some really good reasons that this marketing strategy works. Number one, it's completely efficient. Imagine just paying for a billboard when somebody uses it to contact you. There's no money wasted. Number two, word of mouth is so much more powerful than ads. And number three, a lot of these products need to be explained, need to have education. For example, Thieves is our most popular oil. You really just can't go give this to somebody without talking with them about how to use it, how they could, if they want to put it on their skin, they want to dilute it because it's a hot oil, how they could diffuse it and how to use their diffuser. Um, if they're going to use an oil internally, the safety around that. If you're going to buy something from a big conglomerate store, you're lucky to get eye contact at checkout, nonetheless the clerk telling you how to use the product. But if you have a friend or a family member or even a stranger who has experience with the product, sharing that with you, especially in my industry when people are using these products for the health of themselves, their family members, a pet, that's very valuable. And that to me is the most important part of network marketing. And it's the part that I love the best. I get to know people, what their goals are. I get to help give them solutions and empower them with information and product that changed my life. And I get to watch them change theirs and better their life, whether it's with the products for their own health and wellness or the business opportunity, which is an, like another product that network marketing offers. Again, only a small portion usually take advantage of that. In our industry, it's 7% usually take advantage of the income potential, but 93% are just product users, like I had planned to be before I realized it was a business. When people take advantage of the business opportunity, it's for their financial wellness, because we all know how important finances are in our lives for our mental, physical health, and the amount of worry that we have every day. So I get to help people change their lives, and I love that. I was visiting my mom in Florida a few years ago, lounging by the pool in her over 55 community. And I was looking around and saw people that worked 40 hours a week for 40 years and got a good retirement. That 40, 40 plan is over. It is not the same world that they worked in just a couple generations ago. Robert Kiyosaki, author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, one of my favorite financial books, shared this graph of the middle class numbers in the US dropping off. When people fall off from this chart, they become what he calls the working poor. Poverty may be decreasing in this country, but if you look at this chart at the rise of food stamps, many people are working and not able to even make a livable wage. He believes that real job security comes from working for ourselves. 
let's compare starting your own business to going back to school. This slide shows the drastic decrease in income that a college graduate can expect. And this slide shows the massive increase in student loan debt. Even if you get a good job after college, adding that student debt to your income ratio still makes it hard not to live paycheck by paycheck, nonetheless, save for retirement. As we explore more aspects of network marketing, I'm going to use examples from the company that I work with for three reasons. One, it's the company I work with and the only one I know about in detail. Two, it's a great way to show what some of these aspects look like in the real world. And three, it will give you a really good standard. They aren't the new kids in the block. They've won multiple awards in the industry and they have a great standard to compare any other companies or opportunities that you may be considering. So let's dive deeper into the income potential of network marketing. Compensation is determined by the sales and volume of product that you and your team create. Here's a graphic of the average incomes for various professions in comparison to my network marketing company. This is the company that I work with and each company should have an income disclosure form where you could find these averages in this graph for each rank in the company. While 93% of Young Living members are simply product users and customers. They just become members to get discounted pricing, like a membership at Costco. I've seen some network marketing bashing articles use this exact disclosure to prove that people don't make money with Young Living. Let me repeat, 93% of the members are simply product users. They are only members to get the product for personal use at a discount and not involved with sharing or selling. As you look at these numbers, can I invite you to look at them as a reflection of the families and households that are being positively impacted by the wellness products that they're bringing into their household? Many of us have hangups about money in some way or another, but this is a beautiful way to look at business, isn't it? Let's look at the roughly 7% of members that share on various levels. Some just share organically here and there, and it's an easy way to pay for product that they use in their household, like nutritionals, personal care, healthy food products. And some are more fo have a more focused side hustle for an extra stream of income or a part-time job. Some are quite professional. I hope to be an example of that. The goals of many reaching higher levels of the business are often to retire a parent or a spouse. Often not themselves, because most people in our company love what they do so much it doesn't feel like work. Many have created foundations and causes that they spearhead. It's really a community of giving and serving. In addition to serving on a high level, I have an educational nonprofit for kids, Yoga Journeys, and I'm excited to create a legacy and a business that can be passed down to the next generation. Now let's look deeper at retirement. An interesting comparison to network marketing is looking at two other careers, an insurance agent and a financial advisor. All three careers spend years building relationships, creating trust and serving their clients, creating accounts. When you retire as a financial advisor or an insurance agent, you have to give those accounts to the entity that you are representing. But with network marketing, you get to keep those accounts. My Young Living income will be there not just for my retirement, but to pass on to my family. Cool, right? Let's continue. Financial advisors roughly recommend $2 million for retirement. When I heard that the first time, my stomach sank. Check this out. According to AARP, $1 million is projected to yield $40,000 at retirement. retirement. Let's look again at the income disclosure for Young Living. Even if you took four years to get to the rank of gold, that's how long it took me to get there, and I was just doing it as a side business, the average annual income is $50,000. That would be equivalent to having more than a million dollars in the bank. So if you get to keep your Young Living account for retirement, this is a really good retirement plan. Look at the benefit now of just adding an additional stream of income to your traditional job. This is my team's Royal Crown Diamond, Connie McDaniel, talking about the asset of a Young Living side hustle. Just the rank of senior star doubles the value of a person's earnings from their retirement account, projected at 5%. 
All of this made me feel so much more secure as I looked at retirement. Although on some level I already feel like I'm retired, I love what I do and it doesn't feel like I work. <laughs> I have so much freedom, location, time, and financial. Since I mentioned tax incentives earlier, let's elaborate more on that here. I am not a tax expert, but I do recommend TaxBot for expense and mileage tracking. They also have really great trainings and resources. Let's take a look at a graph of two household scenarios, one without and one with a side hustle income of an extra $500 a month. Yes, their income is increased by $6,000 annually, but they were also able to take advantage of over $25,000 in tax deductions, with a lot, which allowed them to pay less tax and brought their take-home income to nearly $10,000 more than in the scenario without the side hustle. That wraps up the income potential that I wanted to share with you. Compared with the low risk and not going into debt to create a new business, network marketing has a lot to offer. Let's look at what it looks like in action a little more deeply. To demonstrate an aspect of direct sales referrals, let's imagine Amazon paid 40% of their revenue to people that recommended their product. Now imagine that they pay you for the products that that person buys for the rest of their lives. That is a benefit of network marketing and developing your own team and relationships and working with products that are not just a one-time or even 10-time sales, products that become part of people's lives, their lifestyles that they bring into the household, maybe for the rest of their life. These are relationships you're developing that could be absolutely lifelong. Let's use the company that I work with as an example of how a network marketing strategy works within the company. Young Living pays out 50% of their revenue to us, whether you're going to call us independent distributors or brand partners or affiliates, the other 50% goes to the incredible foundation that does work all over the world. And the other 50% goes into research and development and the sustainability of our farms and distilleries all over the world. You can learn more about this at seedtoseal.com. Seed to Seal is a promise of purity and potency that Young Living gives to all of its products. It's beyond organic and a standard that can only be met when there's complete control over every aspect of the production, from the quality of the soil to how and when a plant is harvested to testing in a lab and the distribution phase. I share this because the balance of revenue going to the distributors as well as back to the sustainability of the company ensures longevity to the company. I may get this quote wrong, but I remember hearing Gary Young, our founder, speaking, and he said something to the effect of, if we don't grow our own, we may not have oils. I see farms disappearing, being bought up by large conglomerates. He had so much foresight. Young Living has already been around as a leader in the industry for over 25 years, and it's just the beginning because they're putting that sustainability back into the company. I love being a part of the mission. I love how it's positively impacting sustainability with the quality of their farming methods, the health and wellness of its members, the communities we serve, and the world through conservation and foundation efforts. Choosing a network marketing company is a personal decision. You may not have the same passions as I do, but when you find a company that makes you as excited as I am about mine, that will be half the battle to success. With all of that in mind, let's discuss additional criteria to consider. Again, as we go through this criteria, I may use examples of my company, and in this case, it's because I it will give you a great standard. They aren't the new kids in the block, and I want whatever company you choose to be worthy of your time investments. So let's look at criteria number one, the product or service. Do you like it? Do you feel comfortable recommending it? Is there a real need in the marketplace? Does the product meet that need and solve a legitimate problem for the consumers? Is it priced to sell? Can it compete in the marketplace? Is it also priced for profit? Enough for the company as well as the distributors. As I said er earlier, I'd buy this product <laughs> even if it wasn't my business. 
And I apparently wouldn't shut up about it either. <laughs> as far as profit, many of the products I work with are monthly consumables, nutritionals, which means people are ordering regularly and often returning and even lifetime customers, which means I'm not putting out a lot of effort for a one-time sale. And it also doesn't feel like a sale. It feels like a service and empowerment and education, to be quite honest. Okay, number two, you want to look at the company. Is it well run? Do you believe in the founders and the management team? Choose a company with integrity and being ethical at its core, with a mission you're passionate about. Do they have what it takes to withstand the test of time? Longevity is a big consideration in network marketing. Young Living is a legacy company. It's been around for nearly 30 years. It does $2 billion worth of sales a year and is growing, has 40% of its members ordering each month when most companies have 8 to 10% retention rate. They're in 26 countries, own farms and partner farms around the world, and have had consistent growth throughout its history. Look for a good track record when choosing a company that will be an asset to you. Most companies grow fast, level off, or fail. Look for a company that has a history of consistent growth and will be a smart long-term investment for you. And as seen <laughs> with my bit of gushing earlier, love the company, the mission, and being part of it. Okay. Number three, compensation plan. Look at these different aspects. Can a new person generate income quickly? Can a person develop a moderate part-time income in a reasonable amount of time? For people that are really serious, is there a possibility of a serious income if they work hard? And is the company committed to them in developing their skills? I won't go into my personal compensation plan, but I'm happy to share if you'd like to hear more. P.S. It's awesome. <laughs> and finally, four, will there be support? Will you get a website? Is there a solid online reporting tool? Is there comprehensive trainings? Are there events to help you build your business? And is there support to grow personally? On the note of personal growth, the road to entrepreneurship in any form requires self-motivation, self-management, and learning time management skills. You must make your business a priority. If you're committed and you work it, it will work. You also must be willing to grow personally as well. You must be patient and let go of unrealistic expectations. Education and personal development are part of the journey. Hard work, persistence, perseverance, effort to develop yourself, new skills, and personal growth are the building blocks to success. That's the personal growth aspect of being an entrepreneur. It's not going to be what you accomplish but who you become in the process of getting there that will give you the most satisfaction. What is my biggest advice for not giving up, staying the course and being consistent? Having a strong why. Your reason for becoming an entrepreneur, starting a business needs to be strong enough that it carries you through the ups and the downs. Go beyond the surface. There's a simple process of going seven layers deep. At the surface, you may want to quit your job you hate, or send a kid to a better school, or retire your mom. Ask why. Go deeper. You'd be happier, more present, have more time with your family. Why is that important? Go even deeper. As it gets deeper, and the more emotion that you bring to your why, once it makes you cry, <laughs> you're there, and it will be your strength to keep you going. If you commit 30 hours a week, you'll grow faster than five hours a week. But if you consistently work a side hustle like this, with the time you have, you will grow over time. We saw benefits with just an extra $600 a month. What it could do for your tax deductions, what it could do for your retirement. There's a book called The Four-Year Career in this industry, and basically the way to fail is to give up. Plan giving it four years and be committed to the ups and downs and the learning curves. The biggest part of business success I have found in working with my team comes from the personal growth aspect. Any entrepreneur will need 
to call on courage, to get out of their comfort zone, and to raise their standards to surpass the subconscious ceilings that we must break. What does that mean? <laughs> well, we all have a thermostat, a comfort zone in our emotions and our finances, even our weight, for example. When we get too low, we reach a threshold to change. We get fed up, we lose the weight. We find a way to make more money or we surrender, which get, gets us to a better emotional place. But the same thing happens when you get too high. You reach your subconscious ceiling. We may get uncomfortable bringing in more money in a month than we did in a year. We may be feeling too good. We may get uncomfortable with reaching our goals on some level and self-sabotage in some way. Again, it's not going to be what you accomplish, but who you become in the process of getting there that gives you the most satisfaction in reaching your goals and in being an entrepreneur. I hope I gave you some inspiration to become an entrepreneur, be your own boss, and create your own economy, whether network marketing is a direction that you take or not. If you do choose network marketing, I hope this added to your understanding of the industry Choosing a company, as I said, is a very personal decision. Evaluate it with the criteria we discussed. Make a commitment to yourself to make it a priority in your life and schedule time for it. If you'd like to learn more about the company that I work with, Young Living Essential Oils, either as a business opportunity or simply for personal use in your family's wellness endeavors, I'm happy to take the time to get to know you, your wellness goals, and schedule a 30-minute health consult. You can access your wellness questionnaire to start the process as well as a special offer of $10 off any premium starter kit of your choice through the link with this video or by visiting my website liveyourradiantlife.com and going to the escapees summit tab. If you'd like to learn more about the business opportunity use that same link. I'll send you some information and we'll set up a time to talk. It's pretty easy to get involved, test drive the products and get a sense of the community for the cost of getting products you'd use anyway. In fact, it's the products that those 93% of happy Young Living customers order at a discounted price. The members that don't take advantage of the business opportunity that we discussed earlier. Try out the products, share them with people you know that could benefit from them, whether it's helping kids have a better night's sleep, adding more nutritionals to their regimen, choosing cleaner protein drinks if they're athletes, easily switching to safer, household and personal care products that work great and will reduce environmental toxins. And if you like how the sharing aspect feels, you could lean into the business a little bit more. I'm happy to help you every step of the way. Go as slowly or as quickly as you'd like. It's your business. <laughs> I also invite you to join our supportive Facebook community, Live Your Radiant Life, as we explore empowering topics and tools in the lifestyle areas that support 95% of our health, diet, nutrition, restful sleep, exercise, mindset tools, stress management, and more. You can also have access to that vault that I briefly showed you on my website, liveyourradiantlife.com in the member area. Go ahead and set up a free account and the vault is called Fill Your Cup. It's full of breathing, yoga, gentle yoga, self-care practices, relaxations to support you living your most radiant life. I hope you got value from this exploration of my journey and how I created the freedom in my life that I desired. If you'd like to stay in touch, I look so forward to it. Until then.